What's up mamas? I'm Rebecca. You're watching the reseller mom show. Thanks for joining me today for another video to get more done, make more money and stay sane while raising kids and reselling online. Today's topic is one of my favorites, multiple streams of income. I love talking about money. I love talking about making money and I love talking about a variety of ways that you can do it. And I'm not an expert. I'm just going to share with you what I'm doing to have multiple streams of income. Maybe you're already doing all of these. Maybe there's one or two that you can try out. Let's go over it. So let's start with the obvious. It's the reseller mom show. I'm a reseller. I make money reselling. Um, with reselling, there's a lot of different ways that you can go about it. There's a lot of different platforms that you can be on. There's a lot of different strategies that you can employ to make money. And I've gone over and touched on in a variety of different videos for different reasons, some of these, but this is the first time that I'm guess that I guess I'm going to go over them all. Um, and I'm not going to go into the nitty gritty of each one because most of them all have their own video in some way, shape or form. So I'm just going to kind of go through the list of them. And if you're curious more about one of these topics, you can always ask me. Um, otherwise, go ahead and find out one of the other videos that I've done about it to learn a little bit more. But basically, I sell on three main platforms online. I sell on Poshmark, I sell on eBay, and I sell on Mercari. It wasn't always that way. I've done a lot of different things. I've changed a lot of different things. And in the future, I'm going to be doing different things. But for right now, currently in 2019, um, Poshmark, eBay, and Mercari are my main three online platforms. I make money on each and every one of them. I list all of my items on each of them. So everything is getting cross posted three different places and have three different chances to sell. Because I have a virtual assistant that helps me, it makes it a lot easier for those items to get cross posted to all of, th all of the three platforms. So that's the bulk of the money coming in every single month is gross sales and then profit from those three platforms. The next one that I wanna talk about real quick is Kidizen which is an app that initially was to sell children's clothing. And now they've added, or they also had maternity, and now they've added women's clothing as well. Um, in my opinion, it's a lot smaller of an app. It's kind of got like its own little niche with certain brands and stuff. Um, and there is a lot of work that goes into it, kind of like Poshmark, but different. And I'm not an expert in it, but I was on it for a while. I had some success with it. Then I decided to kind of give it a break for a little bit because I wasn't focusing on kids clothes as much. But now that they have women's, now that I've gotten my feet wet with some of the brands that they kind of push and are interested in and what have you, I think whether it's the end of this year or into 2020, I'm going to start doing more with Kidizen and I'm going to start showing that journey because I will basically not be starting from scratch, but kind of rebooting from scratch, if you will. And so I'd love to share all of that with you. And because I'm not really an expert in it, um, I want to do some Q&A and some maybe interviews with some people that I remember from being on that platform did really well with it. And maybe I can get some tips and then share all that with you. So I'm excited to kind of go back to Kidizen. Um, if you'd like to sign up, whether you're looking to purchase things or looking to sell things, it is a great app. I've bought things on there. I've sold things on there. And um, I do have a referral link where you get something towards your purchase, I think, and then I get a little something for sending you their way. So I would love it if you would like to check out my link down below for Kid Is In, and more will be coming on that in the future. At this time, I don't have any specific videos on it, but it's coming. Next is local Facebook sales. And this is one of those things where I go on a blitz with it and then I kind of pull back on it. It just kind of depends on what things I have to sell and kind of the season of things and kind of how busy I am. Um, I've definitely made a lot of money selling things on Facebook Marketplace or in local buy, sell, trade groups. We have a very active buy, sell, trade group community in my part of Orlando. And so it's worked out really well for me. I've made a bunch of money that way. I do get frustrated sometimes with certain aspects of it, but all in all, I do think that there is money to be made. So that's something that you can always look into. So I won't say that I make a consistent income that way, but it's consistently a player in terms of my reselling makeup overall. Um, I'll go over the next couple and then I'll kind of do just kind of an overall recap on reselling. So the next one is selling to consignment stores. And this I'm a huge proponent of. I do it a lot. I do it at least 
one to three times a month where I take items that either I sourced from the bins or the Goodwill outlet um, or items that maybe didn't sell online. So it's a combination of some things that have been freshly sourced or items that were sourced and listed but didn't sell and they're on their way out. So I kind of use them for two things like that. Um, so I love selling the local consignment stores. There's a few in my area. I have a couple kids ones, a couple women's ones. I'm always looking for like independent ones that I can also add into the mix, but I haven't had as much success with them as I have had with some of the chains for making a small income. But I think sometimes getting a quick flip, sometimes two, three, four times your money, especially if you're sourcing at the bins or maybe very cheaply at a garage sale, selling to a consignment store can be a great um, short-term way to get some cash flow going. And the last one for reselling is garage sales and my dollar clearance sale. So I do have garage sales when our community has them throughout the year. Um, but then recently this year, I've started, now I've done, is it two? I think it's two, um, local $1 clearance sales where basically, and I have a whole video on this, where basically I put out into the community through Facebook that I'm having a dollar clearance sale for clothing of all kinds. And it's basically a garage sale, but just for clothing. Everything is a dollar. Nobody haggles. They just fill up their bin. I give them postal bins. <laughs> they fill up their bin with a bunch of stuff and everything's a dollar and they give me cash and I get rid of a lot of things. Those are not freshly sourced. Those are listed, pulled out of inventory, didn't sell. Maybe there's a small flaw that I noticed, something like that. And so maybe for some reason I decided not to sell it online. I don't know what that would be. Um, they didn't take it out of a consignment store and now I'm putting it out for a dollar. And so most of the time, it's probably a break-even situation if I sourced it at the bins. Sometimes it's going to be a loss situation because I paid for it maybe at Goodwill Retail and I paid $3 for it or whatever. Um, but at this point, it hasn't sold. There's maybe something wrong with it and it's a way to clearance it out of my store and get some cash flow in. So I do those um, about every quarter. I'm kind of almost thinking maybe next year trying to do it every other month. We'll see. It's not a lot of work, but it's just still extra work. So we'll have to see. Um, and again, I have a whole video on that and I'm sure I'll be sharing more about that in the future. So as far as reselling goes, we have three online platforms currently Poshmark, eBay, and Mercari. Hopefully we'll be bringing in Kitizen. We have the local Facebook situation. We have selling to consignment stores locally, and then we have garage and clearance sales locally. Um, and all of those really provide a great mix of income because some of them, like I said, I can buy items at the bins, quickly flip it to a consignment store, then maybe if it doesn't sell there, maybe I can sell it online. The best stuff I can always put online. If it doesn't sell that way, I can always try the consignment store again. If that doesn't work out, I can always try to sell it on Facebook or at my clearance sale. Usually with Facebook, I'm lotting things up. So there's just a lot of different strategies and maybe I will do a separate video specifically about how I work out that mix um, because I feel like I finally found a really good rhythm with processing items through a variety of ways to sell them. And I feel like at this point, this has given me like optimum avenues to sell my items. There may be more ways, there may be different ways, but for me right now, I feel like this is really giving me the most bang for my buck. If I've spent the time to source it, take pictures of it, prep it, measure it, whatever, I wanna get something back. I at least wanna get my investment back if for some reason it doesn't sell for a profit. And so with all of those avenues, I'm able to kind of, like I look at it like in levels, like I can hit it on the high end and make the most amount of profit by selling it online. And sometimes it takes time. The consignment store, I may not make as much, but I can get it quickly or I can recoup it back at the end. Same with the clearance sales. So for me, I feel like having a variety of ways to sell your reselling items um, is a great way to maximize your profits. So that's reselling and up next, I will share some of the other sources of income I have. Next one is one that I don't really talk about very much and I'm not really gonna talk about it too much right now, but I am gonna share it with you and that is print on demand. Um, I don't know how much crossover there is between reselling and print on demand, but I started off with reselling and then somehow, and I don't even remember how, I found out about this world about print on demand. And 
I didn't know it was a thing, just like I didn't know reselling was a thing. And I'm constantly baffled and perplexed by the amount of ways that you can make money online. It is just amazing. But print on demand, I'm so happy that I found it because it really is something that goes well with me and it may not be something for everyone so basically what print on demand is is coming up with some kind of idea or concept or design or intellectual element or asset and putting it online in a platform where it can be sold on an item when someone purchases it and that platform or a series of platforms and partners will fulfill that item for you so basically for a simple explanation if you have a design for a t-shirt and you are with merch by amazon and you put that design on a t-shirt on merch by amazon's platform someone buys it on amazon amazon fulfills it and sends it out to the customer and you get a royalty so in short that's like the basic steps of it there's a lot of different ways like there's i don't even forget what it's called the publishing where they do like little books and journals and stuff with Amazon. There's Etsy where you can do it with Printful or a number of other partners. There's a lot of different ways that you can go about it. And this channel at this time really isn't about that um, because it's something that you kind of need to keep close to your vest. Like you can talk about it in general and that's why I'm mentioning it now, but in terms of like your designs or how to design or, or strategies with keywords, people kind of keep that pretty close to the vest because you don't want to ruin your market for an idea that you have. <laughs> and there's a lot of copycatters out there and all of that. So anyway, there are lots of great channels um, about print on demand. And honestly, I was watching them a lot and then I kind of backpedaled on it and haven't been doing too much with it. But um, so I'm not really sure who the big channels are for it these days, but there are a lot of channels if you're interested in, you can get a lot of very specific information regarding print on demand. The two platforms that I'm on specifically is Merch by Amazon and Etsy. And um, specifically Etsy using Printful to fulfill my orders. And so basically I come up with ideas for shirts and mugs and all kinds of products. And even though I'm not a graphic designer, I make basic simple designs and most of them are text-based. I'm again, not very artistic. So it's mostly about an idea, a catchy phrase, a catchy slogan, something. I'm more of a writer person, I guess, if you would classify me as anything, I'm more of a writer than a designer, let's say. And um, I put these up on Merch by Amazon and, and Etsy. And if someone buys them, the platform fulfills it, it gets sent out and I get a royalty. And what's amazing about it and why I mention it, because I really do think aside from reselling, because reselling has its flaws, print on demand may possibly be for the right person, the perfect thing to do from home. Um, for a stay at home mom or anyone really wanting to make money from home, but I always think of it from a mom's perspective because you don't have to have inventory. You don't have to go sourcing. All you need is your brain and a computer. You can do it any time of day. And once you put the work in once, it can happen over and over again and you get residual royalties or residual income. And so it's a front loaded income. It's not a passive income because it does require work, but there is a passive element to it in that if I put up a design today, it can sell in perpetuity and I never have to touch that design again or do any work for it for that matter. So that's why I like it because I will be completely honest. I did a lot of work on it. I think I found it in September of 2017. I did a lot of work on it. Q4 of 17 and all through 2018. And then last year, November, I put up my last design and I haven't put up any since. And I've been making consistently about two or $300 per month from my work that I had already done. And that's why I love it because I have not touched it. <laughs> and so I don't have to do anything and that money keeps coming to me. So I'm very excited about the future of that. And that's why I work so hard at reselling so I can get reselling almost to an automated place to where that takes up less of my time because reselling is so time consuming. Um, that reselling still brings in a big amount of my money. 90% of it. And so I can't ignore that. I can't just say, whoop, I'm not going to resell anymore. I'm just going to do print on demand because that takes a lot of time to build up. Not every idea that you have is going to work out well. And so there is a lot of work on the front end to it. 
but then it builds over time to become more passive. So I feel like I need both of them to work in hand in hand. So I've been putting a lot of effort on the reselling so that I can build that to a point where I've got a system going enough to where I can turn more attention to print on demand and then build it up a little bit more like I had built it and then get some more residual. You know, if I can get 500 to 800 to $1,000 a month coming in just from print on demand, I would be ecstatic. So, so that's kind of like the second pillar or column in my arsenal of income streams. And then we'll talk about the next one now. The next income stream is kind of like an overarching one and then there's a lot of sub income streams that go along with it and you're very familiar with it. It's the reseller mom show. So I did start this channel to give a voice and a community around being a reselling mom specifically. That's why I started it. I felt it was lacking in the community and I was really curious about that. I'm very passionate about moms being able to make money from home. I am a stay at home mom. Obviously I know there's a lot of reseller moms that work as well outside of the home. So that's a separate pool of people. Um, and this channel is for them too. But for me, for my truth, you know, I'm a stay at home mom. I needed something reselling was that thing. And I felt like I had stuff to offer and a voice to offer and ideas and ways to be efficient that maybe people wouldn't think of. Um, and really just wanted some camaraderie around being a reselling mom where you could feel not judged because you couldn't do crazy numbers, a hundred listings in a day, or, you know, whatever, you know, there's just certain things that we deal with and work around and have to kind of consider as we go about our reselling. Some days it's a reseller day, some days it's a heavy kid day, some day it's a nothing day, you know, there's just a lot that we have to deal with. And so that's why I started this channel, to have a community for myself and to give it to others. Um, and so that was the main purpose for starting it. But to be completely honest, and I think I've mentioned this before, you can't completely take all your time and effort away from something that is making you money, reselling, and then put it into something else like doing this YouTube show and, and Instagram as the reseller mom show without getting something for it and being able to continue on. Like I think about it sometimes, especially while I was not monetized, like I'm putting so much effort into making these videos and so much time. And while I'm learning great skills, I'm enjoying the process. It's a creative outlet. I'm enjoying the comments back and forth with people and like the live show, like I'm enjoying all of it. It's great. But I think about sometimes how many listings I could have gotten up or how many photos I could have done or that I could have sourced while Gio was at school and instead of making videos. And so you just kind of go through that and decide, you know, what's worth it. And so because there is the promise of making an income from this in the future, um, that has kept me going and at least helped justify the time spent. So I'm not doing it solely for money, but if there wasn't any money in it, I wouldn't be doing it as hard as I am. I do one video a week or something like that. One where it's fun, it's cool, it's an outlet, it's a hobby, but it's not part of my business. I have made the Reseller Mom Show part of my business. And so I am looking forward to now that I am finally monetized, although I haven't gotten a payment or anything yet, but I see that I'm like making estimated revenue. Um, so, such a dork, but you know, I see it in my YouTube thing, you know, when I log in and stuff and that's cool and motivating to know that for the last seven or eight months that I've been doing this, now I'm finally going to see some fruits of my labor in a monetary sense, because I have seen the fruits of my labor in a community sense, in the comments that I get from people, when people DM me, I don't get a ton. I'm not like, you know, super duper or anything, but I get them and I appreciate them and I read every single one. And I respond to every single one. It makes me feel good. And I hope that sometimes the things that I put out help or make you feel good or a good reminder or that it just reaches and impacts you in some way, shape or form. And so, you know, again, having a monetary component to it just helps make it feasible to do more of it. And so, um, there is the YouTube AdSense money. Again, I haven't gotten any yet, but I see that it's starting to build and that will continue to snowball. So that's how I will make money from the YouTube channel in the most traditional sense. But there are other ways that I am, have, am, or will make money from having the Reseller Mom Show brand. Um, and I'm going to talk about those. So affiliate income through Amazon. We all 
see everybody's Amazon links at the bottom of videos and we have them in our link trees and it's just kind of like out there. Um, and so, you know, trying, and I want to do more of this, especially in 2020. Um, sometimes you don't want to waste your money on a product you don't really know about. And so it's nice when another reseller who's going to use a product in a similar way that you would has something to say about it and shares like a review. So I'm going to be working on a review about the sweater shaver, the scale that I bought, the light, the ring light that I bought. Um, it's been a long time coming. I just haven't been able to sit down to do it. Other things have come up. But I do want to do more reviews and then hopefully if I share with you a product and my honest opinion and how I use it and if it's worth it or not and you do decide to buy it, it'd be nice if you use my referral link because that gives me a little kickback for telling you about it and, and sharing that information with you. And I do believe that equipment is important to your business. We don't want to spend money on supplies. I hate spending money on supplies, but you have to do it. And sometimes it is worth it and it does make your life easier. And so I think if I can help share that and cut down on that and make that an efficient process for you where you kind of trust what I have to say about something, then, you know, it would be nice if you used a referral link that did a little kickback and let Amazon know I sent you to that product. So Amazon affiliate links, I don't make very much on it. In fact, they pay every month, but I don't always get a payment every month because my amount is so small. So they just sent me an email the other day that was like, well, we sent out payments, but you didn't get one because you didn't meet the payment threshold. But don't worry, we'll hold on to your money till next time. <laughs> so it's funny. But so I, I've gotten one payment so far in the seven <laughs> months that I did was like for $12. But it's all of those little bits of money signify to me that I made an impact. It's just an indicator to me. Like you didn't tell me, hey, I bought the scale that you told me about, but I see that someone bought that scale that I talked about. And so that makes me think, hmm, maybe they would have bought the scale otherwise. Maybe not, but maybe the video that I made about it or when I talked about it or whatever helped them make that decision and now they bought a good scale for them and that's awesome. Like it's like a little confirmation process for me. That's how I look at it anyway. so. There are other affiliate things. So like I did a video about saving time by ordering your groceries and getting them picked up or delivered with Walmart. If you should use that referral link, it will give me $10 towards my groceries. I talk about Kit is in. I talked about it earlier. I've talked about it before. I've talked about Mercari. If anybody signs up with my referral link to one of those apps, they give me a little something and you get a little something. So I think I've gotten a thread up one. A $10 credit. I've gotten some on Kitizen, some people signing up there. I've gotten a couple on Mercari, some people signing up there. So I've gotten a few. I mean, less than like $30 in total um, so far. So it's not a lot. But as my audience grows, as I talk more about different things, um, that will grow. And as I find out about more like there's a couple things that I use right now that I know they have affiliate programs. I just haven't been able to like wrap my brain around putting it out there, but I would like to. And there are things that I use all the time. It's not like I'm just looking for stuff. Like there's a design program that I use that I would be happy to share about, um, a printing program that I use. There's the um, Mile IQ. I have a video coming out about that, how I track my miles. So there's all sorts of stuff that I use that I'm a believer. I use it all the time. I'm not just telling you about it because I can make money off of it. But if I share it with you, why shouldn't I make a little something from sharing it with you? I think that's only fair. I have no problem using people's affiliate links when they share something with me and I've used them a bunch. I think it's just the way the world works now. Peer to peer, mouth to mouth, like word of mouth, all of that. Mouth to mouth. Word of mouth. <laughs> so, um, you know, I just think, I don't think it's sleazy. I don't think it's sneaky. I don't think it's there's anything wrong with it. I'm happy to sign up with anybody's link for anything if I think it's going to serve me well. And I hope that you guys think that as well and don't mind using my affiliate links either as a way to say thank you for an idea that I may have shared with you for just recognizing that it takes time and effort to put this content together. Or maybe you wouldn't have found out about that product without me. You never know. So use a link. Don't use a link. It'd be great if you did. Thanks so much in advance. Next one is the most recent one and that is the reseller mom show etsy store so i'm excited about it like so so excited about it because it's one of those i just like to create and and so for me like print on demand lets me create like design stuff 
the reseller mom show Etsy store lets me put my ideas in a different format and create something that will really hopefully help someone with their business. And so for me, that's doesn't get better that like it, it makes me really happy um, because I think it's cool when a person has an idea and then that idea becomes a thing. And I'm fascinated like, you know, with great brands and their ideas or their innovations or like big thinkers or, you know, just, you know, like Gary V, Love Hint, like Walt Disney, like just, I can't even, Steve Jobs, like Steve Jobs. There's so many people that I admire. And then there's lots of little ones. There's a guy I just read a book about, and I don't think that he's probably anything special. He's just a business book writer, but he had some really interesting ideas and ways to frame stuff that I was like, I totally dig that. Like, that's awesome. And I'm going to take that idea and I'm going to implement it into my world. And I appreciate it because that's going to help me. And not that I'm on any level of these people, but if I can have an idea for a product that could help you in your business, make things easier, help you get more done, make more money, all the things that this whole channel is about, that is awesome. <laughs> like anytime I see a ding on my Etsy transactions and somebody bought something like I can't tell you those few dollars like some of them it's a dollar that I make on it it's the best dollar ever <laughs> because it was my idea that no one else had or maybe they did but they didn't put it out there or whatever it was the thing I created someone else thought it was cool enough to buy I love that and it makes me happy and I hope that it, all these little reseller tools that I create, whether it's the ebook that I did for the local closet clear out, you know, I put all my templates, my tracker, like everything that I've created for me to run that. I feel like it's been pretty successful for me. If you can do that in your area, now that's a way that you can get items into your reselling business. That's amazing. And it would be well worth whatever the price is of the ebook. It's probably going to change over time. I'm trying to feel out different prices. So I don't know what even what I have it up as right now. And I'm running different sales and whatever. But um, you know, like that ebook, those are all my ideas, my creativity and making the posts, the way I wrote the email templates to the clients or the Facebook messenger templates to the clients from the exact process of how I lined it out. Like all of it is a brain dump for me. And the fact that someone thinks it's cool enough that they want to use it in their business and they buy it and I get a little something every time that happens. It's awesome. And again, it's another form of, again, not passive income, but front loaded income in that I did the work once, I created that ebook, I put everything into it, and now it's available and it can sell morning to night, 24 hours a day, as many times as people wanna buy it. And that for a stay-at-home mom really is exciting to me because it means I can be guilt-free playing with Gio and Malia, our dog, and you know, being in the pool and going to the park and doing all those things, knowing that money is still happening. Where with reselling, like it takes a lot. It takes a lot of time and effort and being away from Geo to go source or being away from him to go to the storage unit or whatever. It's a lot of time and effort. And while I love it and it's great and a lot of money can be made from it, these other more passive streams of income, more front loaded streams of income play a big role in what I have and what I want to do moving forward, which is to have a really good mix of it all so that it's not just all resting on reselling to make the, the payments that I want to make, make the income that I want to make. So that is, you know, all of the ways that the reseller mom show has and can and hopefully will in the future make money for me. I've got one left and you may not even be thinking about it. It's completely unrelated. The last way I'm making money is completely unrelated to reselling or print on demand or being on YouTube or affiliate income or anything. And I don't even know how I found out about it. I found out about it a long time ago and I've done it in a few different ways. And now I've got one app, one avenue, one platform that I'm using and it's pretty cool. And it's peer to peer lending. <laughs> and I'm not a financial person, so I'm not giving you financial advice don't necessarily do this. I'm just letting you know that this is something that's out there that I'm doing. So basically peer-to-peer -peer lending is like if I need money for a loan for something, 
I can put my loan need on a platform and other people can crowdfund that loan and I get the money and then I pay it back and then those people get paid. So instead of a bank lending the money, peers, other people are funding loans for others and then getting paid back as investments. And so I found out about it with, I don't even remember how I found out about it. It was a while ago, at least three or five years ago, um, where it was, is it the lent? lending club and I don't have any active loans on there right now I felt like their terms were very long you could either loan people money for three years or five years you could do it in small bits so you didn't have to make a big investment you could maybe do like $25 at a time but you had to wait so long to get you know a few bucks back and so I did a bunch of them and that was cool and I made a you know some money um but I found a different app and I'm going to look into it more further before I share it. I've only done it a little bit, so I'm just going to put the idea out there. I'm not going to share the specific app right now. But um, basically, this app allows you to fund loans for other people, but they're way shorter term. So some of them are two weeks, some of them are a month. It's very quick turnaround, and I'm more comfortable with that because I feel like my money isn't tied up for so long. And so I've maybe funded a handful of loans right now, and knock on wood, <laughs> they will pay me back. And I've made like at least 10% interest on every single one. And if you don't have a lot of money to invest, or if you don't know how to invest, you can't track the market. Like I'd love to be an investor. I'd love to pay attention and buy low and sell high. And it's the same we do with reselling, but I don't have time to like pay attention. There's too many variables. There's too many things it requires a lot of attention on the computer that I don't always get. Like there's just way too much to go into it for me. But peer-to-peer -peer lending, I just look at who needs a loan, loan somebody some money, and yes, hope <laughs> that they pay you back. But, you know, so there is like a gambling element to it. There's a little bit of a risk element to it. And, you know, then there's the like buy low, sell high because you're trying to like look and see who's going to be a good bet as far as paying you back and whatever. But all of those things to get 10% back on your money in a couple of weeks, I think that's pretty good. And so what I'm trying to do is take that, I've only put a, a few hundred dollars in so far, and right now I don't even have a few hundred dollars in at one time, I only have like 150. Um, so when that person pays me back, I'm gonna take the money from that and I'm gonna start putting it in a separate account where I can let that money roll. And I'm just thinking I'm gonna earmark that money for like specific things. Do I wanna use it to buy inventory? Do I want it to go to Poshfest next year? Do I want it to be my extra tax fund in case for some reason I don't have enough money for my tax fund? Um, is it just side income for myself and it has nothing to do with my business? So I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna earmark that money for, but I mention it here because it's something that I'm looking toward as an extra stream of income and it all kind of falls in line with like stuff that you can do at home as a mom. So if you have $500, you can fund a couple of loans, you can fund one at a time and let that pool of interest that you're earning, you know, kind of creep around to where you can do more with it. You can use it for your vacation fund, like whatever you want to earmark it for. But I think having a few side hustles like that to my side hustles <laughs> um, will make things interesting because stuff gets old sometimes, but also it just has like, there's a separate purpose for that money. So again, I haven't decided exactly what that separate purpose is going to be, but I think that having something that isn't reseller related, it's another completely different stream of income is good to hedge your bets. And I don't think that any, I don't think reselling is going anywhere. I just think Sometimes there's ebbs and flows with changes with the platforms, with season, what have you. And so it's nice to kind of have a few, three to four different pools of money. So that's what I'm looking to do with that last one. Let's go over everything one more time real quick. Reselling, print on demand, the reseller mom show, peer to peer lending. Those right now are my four major pillars to creating income for myself and having multiple streams of income and diversifying my income. So I will be doing a lot more as I start setting my goals for 2020 and doing recaps for 2019, sharing more about tactics and strategies and things for each and what changes I'm going to be making to my business. So do stay tuned for that. But I thought this was a good time to just 
sit down as I start thinking about all of it and say, where is my money coming from? Where do I want to focus my efforts? And how can I diversify that so I can hedge my bets across all sorts of platforms? So I hope that if you're not doing any and all of these, that maybe one of these has sparked an interest in you that will help you bring in a little bit more money each and every month. If you have questions about them, please put them in the comments below. If you don't want to put them in the comments publicly, send me a DM on Instagram at The Reseller Mom Show so that I can either do a Q&A later and address them or just respond to you. But I do love hearing all the comments. I read and reply to all of them. Please like this video on the way out and subscribe for more Reseller Mom content to get more done, make more money, and stay sane while raising kids and reselling online. See you next time. Bye.